want to talk about how to lower your closing costs. If you're thinking about buying a house, uh, I have to tell you, it can be a little bit overwhelming because you don't quite understand all the costs that are involved. And even if you've bought multiple properties before, you still may not understand what those costs are. So I'm going to go through and explain some of them, and then I'm going to give you some tips for how to, uh, how to navigate through the process. But some of the things that are covered in closing costs, attorney fees, lender fees, mortgage insurance, real estate agent fees, title search fees, recording fees, property taxes, transfer fees, appraisal fees, title insurance. And so, um, you know, when you, when you go to make an initial offer on a house, uh, before you've made the offer, you work with a lender and a lender is going to give you a good faith estimate. But the good faith estimate is based on uh, basically just a, a shot in the dark. They don't know what house you're going to buy because the house that you buy has, a, has you know, is a variable in all of those fees, not just the price point, but the neighborhood that it's in, the insurance that they could have, um, the, um, you know, the, the and, and not just the insurance, but also the property taxes. Uh, the property taxes are determined property by property. You can have two houses right next to each other and be completely different property taxes. So uh, something important to, 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 to keep in mind. So you're going to get an estimate up front, but when you go under a contract on a house, that's when that gets more fine-tuned. Because uh, even a lender is going to give you a good faith estimate for what your fees should be. You won't know them exactly until you've provided uh, a closing disclosure statement from a title company. So, what are some ways to lower your costs? So again, some of these costs are set in stone. They're government. They're they're you know transfer taxes. They're doc stamps on the deed. They're property taxes. Um, property taxes uh, in Florida vary a lot because they're dependent on how per long the person owned the property, whether or not they homestead had a homestead exemption. So you may be able to dispute the taxes after you've closed, but you're not going to be able to do anything to lower your property tax bill on the house until you own it. Um, but some ways that you can, um, you know, curb your costs. First and foremost, you know, I read an article about this this week, and, and the thing that they didn't mention that I thought was pretty interesting was hiring a great real estate agent that's a great negotiator, that has a good reputation. They're going to know how to navigate through this. They're going to know what's high, what's low. You know, trust them. They're also going to know in certain situations when they can get the seller to uh, pay your closing costs. They're going to know when during the inspection process if something goes south or if something doesn't fit up to your standards, you might be able to get the seller to pay your closing costs. So having someone that is experienced and knows how to negotiate on your behalf is probably the number one most important part of curbing your closing costs because um, if you go directly to the, uh, the, the seller's agent, they may not uh, really help you out that much. They're, they're looking out for the seller's best interest. But if you have a buyer specialist working with you, their goal is to look at all those costs and find a way to get you the best deal that they can, not just before you get under contract and as you get under contract, but throughout the process as the you know, the, the steps of buying the home go through and there are, you know, potential issues with the appraisal or the inspection or, or anything like that. Another, another really good one uh, that, that I thought was important um, was, was lender fees. And I think Mike will tell you this too, shop around, um, you know, and, and don't just compare fees though, because we talked about it on the show before. There are a lot of companies out there that will do it really, really cheap and waive a bunch of fees, but cheap work ain't good and good work ain't cheap. So, you know, sometimes when you look for the discount person, you may not end up getting the closing or they bought, may botch your loan. Yeah, I mean, I hate to look for the discount person with, with when it comes. Yeah. But, but, however, you go to somebody that's good and then they'll match, you know, they're, they're going to be totally. competitive. You know, they want to match or beat the fee to keep you. So don't necessarily shop on fee. Get who you like. And then see what they can do on fees. Go back to them and say, hey, if I do this, what about this fee? And what about that fee? And again, uh, all they can do is say no. Um, secondarily, um, another, you know, asking for it in closing costs is a big part of it. Um, you know, the, uh, you know, looking at the day you close matters because some of your fees can be prorated. Um, delays in closing, things like that are things you want to avoid if you really want to control your costs. Um, you know, another, another important part of it. Um, you know, if you're working with, um, you know, a great real estate agent, they're going to be able to negotiate on your behalf for, you know, closing costs in a lot of instances. Sellers will pay those closing costs. And then paying attention to the contract. There are parts of the contract that say seller pays this and buyer pays that. And there are things that are considered standard, but it also depends on how good your offer is. Right. And, you know, those things are all you know, you want to really pay attention to those things because closing costs a lot of time come out of pocket. You know, this is not something that 
is going to be part of your mortgage. So these are this is more and more money that you actually have to shell out, including your down payment. So if you're working with an agent who really knows what they're doing, I mean, they can assess, okay, how long has this property been on the market? What's everything else uh, looking like as far as sales in the neighborhood? Did those uh, properties include closing costs? Because we have access to all this information. So if something's typical for the neighborhood where sellers are, are paying closing costs, if this is a first-time home buyer neighborhood where first-time home buyers are more typical, you know, all these things go into the idea of, okay, is this seller probably going to be able to pay closing costs? Are they going to be willing to pay closing costs? And do you have another good agent on the other side that wants to work with you on that? So you, somebody that's great and who's done this a long time can assess all those different things in order to get you the most money as a buyer. Yeah, no doubt about it. There, there are other tricks of the trade, like the day of the closing can control your prepay, you know, how much money you right. come up from. But you're paying that anyway. It's just you're moving the money around, really. And, and, and same thing with, you know, uh, you know, taxes and insurance, shopping around for those things, too. Shopping around for homeowners insurance. Taxes you can't really shop around for, but you can contest them after the fact. So there's lots of different ways that you can save money on closing calls. Hopefully this was helpful. And we'll be back continuing our conversation about the Tampa Bay real estate market here on the Duncan Duo Show after a quick break.